Hi, Pamela Bellison here. Thanks for coming back to my channel. Today I'm going to show you a technique called piercing. And this is a technique that is used in woodworking frequently with a scroll saw. But today we're going to show I'm going to show you how to do this with just a regular jeweler saw and a sheet of metal. Piercing metal is the technique of removing metal from the inside of a design without entering that space to cut it out. From the outside edge. In the last video I showed you about the ergonomics of sitting at your bench pin when you're sawing sheet metal and we're going to bring that into this work and I showed you demonstrated how to saw different lines, how you need to hold your saw frame um, and how to maneuver uh, your saw frame to get straight lines, soft curves, hard curves, spirals, and hard corners. This is a very easy technique to do. It doesn't take much material and skills to do, just lots of sawing practice. And with piercing, you, depending on your design, you can get a lot of sawing practice with it. Um, so let me show you first how to set this up, okay? Come on, let's get started. So these are the basic materials that you want for piercing a design. You don't actually need to use um, a clip art book, but I have a particular fondness for this one um, personally. I like a lot of Japanese, uh, I do a lot of Japanese inspired, Asian inspired work. And this is the design that I used for my earrings. Um, I took this to the photocopy machine to my printer and I enlarged the design just a little bit for the pendant. I left it the original size for my earrings but I wanted a little bit bigger one for my pendant. This is not a requirement for piercing. If you're good at drawing, if you want to create your own design, absolutely. Just draw it on a piece of paper. Um, it can be either vellum or regular copy paper. It could be anything, any kind of paper that you want. One of the things that you need is some rubber cement. Some people use regular Elmer's glue. I, I personally, I like rubber cement. We're gonna use the rubber cement to attach the paper, my design, to my metal. And then you're gonna need a jeweler's saw. So I am ready to get this design onto the metal. That's where my rubber cement comes in. Before I get started, one of the things that I forgot to mention that you might need, or that you do need, is something to clean the metal with. You want to remove any grease that you might have from your hands from the surface of the sheet. And so one of my favorite things in the stu studio is 4 aught steel wool. I'm just going to lightly go over my piece of metal with the steel wool. and. If you are somebody who likes super bright, shiny, mirror finish silver jewelry, you don't want to use steel wool. If you do, you're going to have a, a lot of um, scratches to remove, but I like brushed finish. So what I use is steel wool. If you want that shiny finish, what you want to do is, is stay away from the steel wool and use some degreasing soap like Dawn dishwashing soap, some simple green or um, something on that that uh, line so that it doesn't put any scratches on the surface of the <clears throat> of the metal. But so now I've cleaned my metal and um, I'm going to put some uh, 
rubber cement on my paper. Um, and I'm going to put some on the sheet of metal as well. You don't want to make this very thick, just a light thin coat on both the metal and the sheet. If you have big globs, it's going to be, it's going to um, have a tendency to peel up when you start doing this. So you want to make sure that your uh, application of your glue is really, th is nice and thin. I don't know what it is about. They say it's good to do it in both directions in, uh, with rubber cement, but that's what I do. I don't know if that's absolutely necessary or not. Now you're going to want to blow on that or just wait a few moments and um, uh, wait for the, uh, the glue, excuse me, wait for the glue to get a little matte, not shiny. So I'm going to blow on this. Okay. So now my glue is nice and matte. It's not um, super shiny and wet. And I'm going to carefully lay this on my piece of metal. I'm kind of skimping on this because this is what I had available. Um, I need to make some more sheet. But um, what I'm going to do is take this up to the light so I can make sure that I get it just right and I don't end up with... Uh, losing some corners of my metal here. So I've glued my design to the metal. I've rubbed off the rubber cement on the outside edges. And now I'm going to just take my finger and rub it over the design so I can get out any air bubbles. And now I just have to wait a little bit for this to set up. Okay, let's try this again. <laughs> One I just showed uh, you is I used a ball burr to put a little divot in every part of the um, design that I want to remove. And I didn't put it up the stem because I'm going to be able to enter there from, from inside the leaves and so on. But I put a little divot there so that then as I set my fine drill... The drill doesn't skeeter around all over the metal. This lets me set the drill bit right into the little hole before I press the foot pedal to make the, the flex shaft turn and drill the hole. I'm also going to lube my, my drill bit every couple ho holes or so to keep it nice and sharp. So I have now drilled holes through every part of the design that I'll be able to insert my um, saw blade into. This is looking from the back. In the last video, I showed you about how to load your saw frame so that you have a good tension in it. And this is going to give you lots and lots of practice. You have all your holes in here, and each one of those holes, you're going to insert your saw blade. I'm going to start at the bottom, and I'm going to have the design facing me. A lot of students tend to put it in here this way so that they could see the design, but when they turn it that way, so you want to make sure that you have your design facing away from you and put your um, your saw blade in your first hole. Then you can use this to push forward and help guide your blade into the end of your um, the end of the saw blade into your saw frame and now you can begin to saw this out from the inside without ha having to enter in from the front. I'm also going to wax my blade and I'm going to carefully hold this every time I maneuver it around so that it doesn't twist or catch my um, catch my uh, blade and break it. Now I'm just going to begin. Oh, 
I need to keep this going straight up and down as I turn and now I'm going to slowly start sawing out the leaf. And you may have to blow, use your fingernail, a little brush or something to brush some of the sawdust away. Now I'm at the point of the leaf and this is where I showed you on those hard corners you want to stay in place as you turn turn the metal and turn your saw so that you can corner without twisting the blade and breaking it. And again, another hard corner, another hard corner, another hard corner, hard corner, And we're going to take this first leaf down to the stem and then we're going to take a look at it. And there we go. Now we're going to undo the blade, take it out, and there's your first leaf with part of the stem. Now we're going to just do this to every one of these. All right, I have my pendant all cut out. You can see that, doesn't that look cool? From the back, well, there we go. I've sawed out everything, I pierced out everything from the inside, and then I cut out the, out, the outside edge. And now all I have to do is peel up this paper, which comes off very easily. And if you find any residue of the um, rubber cement on your metal, it's not a problem. All you have to do is rub it right off. Some things might be a little bit pickier to get off because they're little tiny pieces, but there we go. Can you see that better? There you go. Now all we have to do is solder on a finish. We have to file it. And then we'll be soldering on a bale, and it'll be a nice little pendant to wear with my earrings. Thanks for joining me today. I hope you had fun learning about how to pierce metal. And this is a highly detailed one, and I recommend that you start with maybe something, if you if, if your first time, start with something um, a little less complicated, a little less detail, start with a, bit, a little bit bigger design, and um, get lots of practice until you can go down to something really fine like this. I hope you had fun, and I hope you join me next time. Thank you. Bye-bye.